Widespread attacks on Hezbollah communication devices in Lebanon this week have turned the spotlight on Israel's secretive unit 8200. On Tuesday, Hezbollah pagers detonated across the country simultaneously when a coded message was sent to them. The next day, handheld radios used by the armed group exploded in Beirut suburbs and the Beka Valley. The combined attacks killed at least 37 people and wounded over 3,000 more. Although Israel has so far remained silent on the surprising attacks, security sources told Reuters they were likely carried out by its Mossad spy agency. However, one Western security source said that a secretive cyber intelligence unit that is not part of the Mossad was also involved in planning the operation, which the source said was over a year in the making. Unit 8200 is the largest single military unit in the Israel Defense Forces. It functions in a similar way to the U.S. National Security Agency and, according to sources, was involved in the development stage of the Hezbollah devices, specifically the technical side of testing how explosive material could be inserted in them when they were manufactured. Although the IDF rarely comments on 8200's activities, in 2018 it said the unit's operations ran from intelligence gathering and cyber defense to, quote, technological attacks and strikes. Reuters on Wednesday interviewed Kobe Samborski, a former member of the unit. Samborski said he had no knowledge that Unit 8200 was involved in the attacks in Lebanon, but said the sophisticated operation seemed like the sort of projects that drive its members. So of course I don't I don't know anything about it, and even if I knew I could not say anything. But to me, that's a great example of a can-do attitude. You know, if, if you think of if someone would have told you yesterday or a day before this event that something like this could have happened, you would say, Yeah, I don't think it's possible. It looks like something from a from a you know science fiction movie. Uh, I think those are exactly the kind of uh, challenges that make such you know young people excited and and uh, and um, uh, I think a, you know a great example of of how smart minds could could work to to achieve a challenge that looks uh, again crazy when when you just think of it for of the first time. Samborski also says a hallmark of the unit is its high turnover of young, hand-picked recruits replacing veterans. People get to the unit at mostly at the age of 18, which is, of course, very young. They have zero experience. Innovation is almost an integral part of the, of the, of the culture. And it, 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 it's, it's very exciting, specifically in our day and time where things are moving so dramatically. So whatever the organization learned to do, after a few years, you want to rotate it and you want to learn new stuff. So with this flow of new and very talented, very young and talented people, you get this almost automatically. Some graduates of Unit 8200 have gone on to build Israel's private tech sector and some of its biggest companies. Samborski himself is now a managing partner at an early stage fund investing in cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Unit 8200 also handles signals intelligence and effectively functions as Israel's early warning system. As such, it shouldered some of the blame for failing to detect Hamas's October 7th assault on southern Israel. Last week, the unit's commander said he was stepping down. In his resignation letter, carried by Israeli media, he said he hadn't fulfilled his mission.